Hi there, and welcome to this special edition of the Matt and Sean 365 Refresh Show. In today's episode, we're covering all the major updates announced at Microsoft Ignite, November 2021 edition. From the East Coast of the US, I'm Matt Wade. And from the West Coast, I'm Sean Bugler. This is the third remote version of this conference since the beginning of the pandemic, and Microsoft seems to have gotten more into its stride with an online platform and making its announcements to a crowd that's not in person, and more importantly, not complaining about it being too cold in the room or the chairs being too hard. Agreed. And we're pretty excited about a number of these updates, but a bunch of them, uh, as we've seen in the past, are kind of double dips on announcements from the past. Yeah. In this video, we'll kind of weed through these announcements through from this week and discuss what's new, what's already on the roadmap, and most importantly, what we think is going to be the most impactful. And if this is the first time you're seeing uh, one of our faces, this mustache normally isn't here. Um, it needs to stay, though. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Drop a comment in the, the video below. Uh, the two of us host a weekly show that simplifies the fire hose of information that is the Microsoft 365 roadmap and all its thousands of updates. So like and subscribe if you found this video helpful and stick around as we make things easier for you and your organization to plan for the future of using Microsoft 365. And with that, let's dive into the first new item for today. The big announcement from Ignite was Microsoft Loop. That's right, Microsoft has acquired Hyperloop and will soon be building the most technologically advanced mass transit. I'm just kidding. One of the first dedicated applications of the Fluid framework, Loop is now the new name of Fluid and is effectively a giant freeform whiteboard where you can add live collaborative components for everyone to access and edit while ensuring these always up to date, I kid you not, they're really calling them this, atomic units of productivity can be dropped into various experiences, including Loop itself, but also Teams, Outlook, and OneNote, at least for now, the current loop components available are the agenda, notes, and task list components, which are coming to Microsoft Teams meetings as a way to collaborate on those meetings uh, related items live with other participants without having to create or edit a dedicated Word or OneNote file. Additional components like voting tables, status tracker, and Dynamics 365 components are on the way. Custom component opportunities will be discussed at Microsoft Build, which is usually in May. This concept may be kind of hard to visualize, but imagine you create a task list in one place, but you want to display it in multiple. With the Loop task list component, you can add this list to an email, a Teams meeting, a Loop workspace, and anywhere anyone makes a change, that update is reflected everywhere the Loop component is displayed. Microsoft has also discussed support for these components in the other Office apps, so imagine a status table uh, you create for a PowerPoint slideshow to your boss that you can also add to a Word document used to write a status memo to file and send to your e uh, CEO in an email. That table will always load with the current information regardless of the age of the medium. Pretty powerful stuff. Both the Office homepage and the Office app. Did you know that there's an Office app? There is for Windows and mobile. And both of them are supposedly getting a meaningful overhaul over the coming weeks and months. Recommended files becomes recommended actions. And it's picking up a variety of hooks that we've already started to see in those daily Cortana, sorry, Viva emails that we get every day, including options to respond to comments and documents, create tasks, join meetings, and more. The Office Hub, as they're calling it now, is also picking up a customizable quick access space for files you've recently interacted with, shared with others, or you can even create a custom filter for things like files shared with Matt. Now, beyond that, the new My Content pane almost feels like a modern file explorer for the web, which leads to some really interesting questions about what Microsoft thinks the future of Windows might be. Uh, but in the more immediate sense, it feels like a smarter way to organize files across of Microsoft 365. It's a lot of the same functionality already present in OneDrive, but organized in a way that doesn't confuse the user because it's all visible in OneDrive. Lastly, there's a reimagined Create pane. Users will be able to get started creating pretty much anything from Sway presentations to Power BI dashboards, and even find custom organization-wide templates right from the Office Hub. Oh, and one more thing, in case you didn't see it in the video that I'm playing here, Convert to PDF is officially an embedded action. Bonus! 
We've talked a lot about the move to the modern Microsoft Stream in our regular Microsoft 365 update show, and a number of the already announced features were re-announced today, or the other day. For example, live transcripts from Microsoft Teams will display alongside a meeting recording in the new Stream player. What we didn't really know that we do now is how they were going to manage pairing functionality like transcripts with videos in a seamless way that didn't confuse the user which is how we ended up with what Microsoft is now describing as an entirely new concept called Video as a Document, or VAD. Because of course we don't have enough as a acronyms out there to describe how video files are now being managed in SharePoint and OneDrive. Rather than treating videos as this black box that just shows moving pictures and plays sound, Microsoft 365 is breaking down videos into their core components, which allows them to add more to what videos already offer. For example, in addition to adding transcripts, they're also including chapters, the ability to parse videos based on specific points of interest. They're also incorporating points of interest that will intelligently suggest where to jump in a video, like when a presentation slide changes in a recording, so that you can jump right to it. And of course, with everything they've introduced over Ignite, comments are a really big part of this, including the ability to at mention and reply. We also saw them highlight their recent acquisition of the company ClipChamp, a video design tool, and the official preview launch of the Stream Migration tool, which will allow admins to begin migrating video from Stream Classic to the new modern Stream. Microsoft Teams sees a collection of updates that range from meh to pretty cool, with seemingly nowhere in between. Let's start with meetings. And in an aim to force VR on us, whether we want it or not, Mesh for Microsoft Teams was announced as one of the first practical applications of Microsoft Mesh. Microsoft claims it's a leap from 2D to 3D, enabling new experiences with personalized avatars and immersive spaces where users can have shared immersive experiences. In reality, it's peg people for Teams meetings, and you'll never convince me this forced VR thing will ever really catch on, but it'll be available uh, in preview the first half of 2022. On a more positive note, Teams Meetings Rooms, the name Microsoft gives conference rooms that use hardware setups that optimize the Teams meeting experience, has gotten a lot of love as organizations figure out a hybrid work solution. Announced today were additional direct guest join options, including BlueJeans and GoToMeeting, plus admin management of Surface Hub devices and hot desking support to Teams-enabled rooms. These are all due in 2022. And finally, Teams webinars will see some additional features, many of which were uh, previously announced. Expect to see green room support, enhanced controls for managing what attendees see, the co-organizer role so more than one person can manage breakout rooms and meeting options, the Q&A app for moderated chat, and support for isolated audio feeds. Moving on to collaboration, and in an effort to catch up with Slack, or at least respond to all the user demands, Teams newly announced it will provide 800 plus reactions to replace the existing six for chat and channel messages. They newly announced you'll be able to send private messages to yourself to send notes and reminders. And they re-announced because why not get the extra credit? Teams Connect or shared channels between organizations within your team, which will be in preview in early 2022. Additionally, Teams newly announced the ability to change the chat density so that you can uh, show more or fewer lines of messages in the desktop experience, as well as delayed delivery so you can have a message sent on a Saturday morning so your boss thinks you're putting in the extra effort. Incidentally, the available documentation on delayed delivery implies it's only for private chats, not channel messages. Disappointing if true. Lastly, by the end of 2021, you'll be able to chat with Teams' personal accounts if you know anyone who uses them, and you should be getting the new Teams search experience very soon. Also, if you happen to uh, be using Teams a lot, you find it sometimes difficult to use or it's hard to explain to your colleagues how to use it correctly, um, this might help. Uh, this is a book that I put out just a few months ago. It is Teach Yourself Visually Microsoft Teams. It is a very screenshot heavy, very task oriented. I just have to do X in Microsoft Teams. So get your copy today. There is a link down in the description and uh, I don't think you'll be disappointed. On the Power Platform side of things, Microsoft has announced a slew of enhancements and updates that meaningfully push things forward. One of the biggest announcements, while may not necessarily sound as exciting as it is, uh, is a new pricing model option for Power Apps. Rather than having to predict in advance how much usage an app might receive, which is difficult for businesses and more importantly, difficult for citizen developers, 
who are building these things, they're introducing a new pay-as-you-go per app licensing arrangement that will allow businesses to only pay for the unique users that are actually using these apps. Sticking with Power Apps for just a moment longer, they're also introducing this concept of Power Apps as pseudo-native mobile apps that can be distributed directly through mobile device managers like Intune or even packaged up and submitted to the no kidding Apple App Store and Google Play Store. This means that you can create business critical apps and distribute them like business critical apps without users having to download the Power Apps player just to get to them. Broadening back out to the Power Platform overall, a handful of collaboration features were announced as well. Comments and at, option, uh, at mentions will soon land in Power Automate, Power Apps, and Power Virtual Agents, allowing users to work together synchronously or asynchronously. Now, it's important to note this isn't real-time collaboration yet. They're calling a lot of this stuff co-presence. It's not real-time collaboration, but it's clear that there's more work to be done here and that that tends to be where they're looking. Now, with the Power Platform, one of the biggest challenges has always tended to be adoption. To help combat that, uh, Microsoft actually introduced a new Power Platform adoption playbook, offering detailed guidance on best practices, how to implement guardrails, and developing internal maker communities. These are really big changes that are going to help a lot of organizations, big and small, try to find their footing when it comes to what the Power Platform is supposed to be. Most of the Power Automate's updates surround RPA, or Robotic Process Automation, allowing users to manage and automate otherwise manual processes that might span across desktop applications and the web. With the new launch of the Azure Virtual Desktop Starter Kit, organizations can scale up RPA workloads by automatically turning on Azure Virtual Desktops when needed. Neat. Now, on the much more user-focused side of things, one key highlight is that team-specific Power Automate flows are getting folded into the newly redesigned Teams App Store for even easier access. And the Power Automate desktop app for Windows has picked up a new simplified recorder that allows users to record their actions on their computer across the web and the desktop and to save those flows to play back and to even connect with cloud-based flows. Power Virtual Agents picked up a few updates on the building and user side of things as well. Launching in preview, Power Virtual Agents will be able to proactively message users in Teams rather than waiting for a direct prompt. The ability for an agent to answer a phone call for Dynamic 365, which is generally available now, and Power Virtual Agents bots can now be used as Microsoft Bot Framework skills. When it's time to roll out your Power Virtual Agents, you can also now do so using specific security groups in Microsoft Teams, which is in preview now. And coming soon, you'll also be able to add a bot directly to a Teams channel. Closing this bit out with AI Builder. If you don't already know about it, AI Builder is a powerful AI modeling tool built right into the Power Platform. It's already able to do incredible things like recognize objects and read business cards. But now, in preview, it can also do the following. Bring a custom-built AI model into AI Builder to use in the Power Platform. They're also introducing a new connection between AI Builder and Loeb, which is an industry-leading AI service that now comes with AI Builder. And they've also announced future seeding of AI Builder capacity will be included in Power Apps. The Viva Insights apps in Microsoft Teams is getting some updates, uh, and money will be at an extra charge. If you're not familiar with Insights, it's a Microsoft Teams-based version of My Analytics, which helps identify good and bad work habits based on what you work on. Plus, mindfulness tools like virtual commute and meditation. New features will help managers improve personal habits and foster team culture. Something to encourage managers to be better is always a welcome uh, improvement from my perspective plus database feedback on how your meetings run and guided meditations with Headspace. Other general updates on Microsoft Viva include Viva Topics and Viva Learning going GA, which means they're fully baked and officially ready to use. And you'll find more integrations with third-party apps plus extensibility options, but I'm sure we'll hear more about uh, at uh, Microsoft Build. If you're not familiar with all this Viva stuff, check out our video linked above for a deeper dive into each of the modules. And, you know, to, to completely catch us off guard, our buddy Jared also threw out this little tidbit. 
Viva has four modules, connections, insights, learning, and topics, all designed to connect employees to just-in-time information and resources that can help them do their best work. And with our acquisition of Ally, we're adding a fifth module focused on connecting work to strategic objectives. And that's all we heard about the fifth module. So hopefully we'll find out sometime soon. Not to be left behind, PowerPoint continues to have some new tricks up its sleeve. Microsoft clearly thinks that video is going to be a critical component of the hybrid modern workplace. So it's announced Recording Studio, an enhanced recording experience for PowerPoint to bundle together all the tools that you might need to get the job done. Some notable features include a prompter view, the ability to preview, edit, and re-record specific portions, and even annotate specific slides all as part of the recording. All the magic of PowerPoint without me having to be there to drag you through it all. Recording Studio is scheduled to arrive in early 2022. <sighs> and that's it. Well, not really. Um, there were plenty of other items, but these were the highlights from the Microsoft 365 side of things. You can find the rest of the announcements in the Ignite book of news, which we're going to link in the description. And we'll be diving a bit deeper into these items, plus some of our commentary on them, which you didn't get a lot of uh, in this particular episode. There's just too much to cover. Uh, so join us live on Monday. If you're interested, subscribe now and you'll know when to join us live. Matt, how are you feeling? Uh, better than you look, I guess is all I got to say. It's been a week. <laughs> Can relate. Can relate. But it's so, you know, I, I know we're obviously going to be kind of talking a little bit more about the specific items, but would you say that Ignite has kind of stepped back into the big shoes that it kind of made for itself, that Microsoft had made for uh, it over the past few years? Yeah, I think the production value online is, is a lot better now. I think the first one, admittedly, they had a lot of, uh, you know, catching up to do at that point wasn't so great, but I think we've gotten to a point now where this is, this is the expectation and um, I would hope to see Ignite still be in person in the future, <clears throat> but still make it a an online experience first with the in person as the added bonus for that interaction and talking to the people and you know that kind of thing. Um, trying to compare it or not compare it to like the Apple events of late because those are like James Cameron produced events. But <laughs> I mean, you know, they're both multi trillion co dollar companies. They can both afford it if they want to. They just choose, you know, spend differently. One of those companies mows their lawn. <laughs> Uh, and the other one needs a paint job on their house and all that kind of stuff. I didn't say that. <laughs> well, anyway, thanks so much for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe. Good luck playing around uh, with or rolling out some of these new features. And we hope to see uh, you for the next episode when we'll be discussing more of our thoughts and opinions on these announcements. That video will broadcast live on Monday, November 8th. Or, hey, you can watch it afterwards. Thanks so much for watching. <laughs>